Welcome to episode 35 of Live It Out with the Planning Woman. I'm your host, Jennifer Booth, founder of The Planning Woman and creator of The Planning Woman's 30-Day Scripture Journals, as well as the new Live It Out Planner pages. I'm also a time management consultant and a certified life purpose coach. I'm so glad you could join me today for this episode. It is my hope that you will be encouraged by what you hear to be able to live a life of real purpose with a real plan that helps you to experience real peace. Ah, spring. I'm so glad the weather is finally getting a little warmer, at least where I live. It is so nice to be able to go outside and enjoy the sunshine after a long, dreary winter. I hope you are beginning to see signs of spring where you are, too. In last week's episode, we talked about how you can make a difference in your home a little bit at a time. With the spring season upon us, we tend to get the itch to clean out and organize our homes. And if you listened to last week's episode, then you were able to learn four strategies for getting your home decluttered and organized in just a few minutes a day. While decluttering and organizing our homes may be at the forefront of our minds, there is another area of our life that we need to look at and declutter and organize as well. And that area is our mind. Listen to these questions and see if any of them seem familiar to you. Where are my keys? Did I fill out the permission slip for my child's field trip? What date was that event? Why can I never find what I'm looking for? Over the years, I have asked these and other questions related to my papers, my time, and my possessions. It's frustrating and overwhelming when we don't feel like we have a grip on what's going on in our lives. However, with all the information we receive on a daily, even hourly basis, it's hard to keep up with all the things we need to know. Let's talk a bit about where all our information comes from. I've found that it usually originates in one of the following areas. Mail, mail, excuse me, um, you know, snail mail that, that you get in your mailbox every day, email, papers from church, school, or other activities that you or your kids may be involved in, voicemail, text messages, social media, as in people commenting on your um, profile page, or even social media messages, like the private messages they send through social media, conversations, meetings, and your own thoughts. That's at least 10 different places we have to constantly check to make sure we are capturing all the information. This list alone is enough to boggle my mind. No wonder our minds are overloaded. And what about that last area I mentioned? All those thoughts you have at random times of things you know you need to do, thoughts that come to you in the most inconvenient times like when you're driving or taking a shower or even trying to go to sleep at night. What do you do with all those thoughts? Eventually our minds get overloaded and things begin to slip through the cracks. Am I right? Surely I'm not the only one who has experienced this. Several years ago, I was introduced to the concept of mind organization. Mind organization is a huge part of my time management system now. I'm sure you're wondering what mind organization is. Well, simply put, it's a system where you capture every piece of information that comes into your life that you need to act on in a place where you will trust that you will see that information again and will act on it in a timely manner. For instance, I just went through a pile of papers on my kitchen island that included things like a save the date card for an upcoming wedding, a magazine renewal form, and my daughter's shot records that I need to make sure are up to date. In the past, I have just piled these papers up on my counter in the kitchen or place them in a wall pocket in my laundry room. With these kinds of storage solutions, I found myself always scrambling to find a form I needed, 
or I often forgot about certain items in the pile because I didn't always look through it. Now I have an organized system that allows me to capture all that information in one place in an organized fashion. I look at it every week during my weekly review and nothing gets overlooked. I'll go into more detail on how this system works later, the whole mind organization system. However, for today and the next two episodes, I want to share three simple strategies you can implement to help you get things off your mind and into a place where you will remember to act on them so you can conquer the chaos in your mind. The three strategies that we'll cover um, in this episode and the next two are first, to do a weekly review, second, write it down, and third, have one place for all your information to live. Today, I want to focus on the weekly review because it is the foundation for effective mind organization and time management. A weekly review is a time you set aside at the end of the week, such as sometime over the weekend, or a time you set aside on Monday mornings to go over your calendar and your to-dos to see what needs to be done in the week ahead. This process ensures that you can stay up to date with all of your responsibilities, and it helps you to make a more effective plan to get important tasks done. I'd love to be able to show you this in person, what my weekly review looks like. I think it's more effective to see it in real life. Sometimes it's hard to describe something um, just over a podcast um, to fully comprehend what it looks like, but I may do a video about it one day that I can share with you. But for now, I want to walk you through the process that I do each week. Hopefully, it will make sense and you can pick up some ideas that will help you get your mind organized. So I choose to do the weekly review. Um, Ideally, I'd like to do it on Friday afternoons, but it's usually Saturday morning or Sunday evening when I get a chance to sit down with my paper planner and plan out the week ahead. I do not like to do it on Monday mornings. Um, For one thing, I still have an outside-the-home job that I do on Mondays, and so I'm not home first thing in the morning. I have to get up and get out the door for that job. And so I try to get it done sometime over the weekend. So as I said, I sit down with my paper planner and plan out the week ahead. And part of this process includes assessing what needs to be on my to-do list for the week. Now, I use the calendar on my phone as my main calendar. I schedule all of my appointments on that calendar. So if it's not on the calendar on my phone, then it's not happening. I use my paper planner as a place to plan out my work. It's not where, um, if I'm going to make an appointment, I don't look in my planner first to make the appointment. All of my appointments are in my phone. Um, It just makes it easier. So if I don't have my paper planner with me, I always have my phone, and I just use that one place to update. So if I'm wondering what's going to be happening in the next week or two, I look at my phone, not at my paper planner. For me to have a realistic plan, though, I do have to write out upcoming appointments and commitments in my planner so I can make sure I've taken into account the time I've already committed myself to because it's kind of crazy to make a plan for a week and not know the things you're already committed to for that week. So it just helps me um, to just see everything as I lay out my week. If I go ahead and get those appointments and set commitments in, um, in my planner. And I think I've mentioned on this podcast before, um, I'm not sure I know, I've written about it on my blog at theplanningwoman.com, but I use a Uh, two page per week spread so the week is spread out across two pages and I can see my whole week at a glance and um, it just helps me to get a feel for how my week is going especially when I can see all of those appointments and commitments written out then it shows me all the white space I have and how I can plug in my to-dos for the week 
So in planning out the week ahead, I fill those appointments and commitments in that have a set time. And then I get to work on deciding what tasks need to be accomplished that week. So I shared in my last week's episode that I used the Sunday basket system from Organize 365 to help me corral all of my papers and my thoughts. And you can easily create your own weekly review basket, though, by um, using a letter tray or a basket or a box of some sort, a file box, to hold everything that you need to deal with. Having a place to store all the information that comes in during the week is how I get things off of my mind. This basket or box or whatever other storage ideas you come up with is key to the whole weekly planning system. Once you begin using this system, it's very important to remember to use this one place to store your information. This is how your brain begins to trust the system and begins to relieve you of the nagging feeling that you've forgotten something. In this basket, I put items I receive during the week from the regular mail, email printouts, magazines, catalogs, and any other paper I receive that I know I need to deal with at some point. And I collect these items all throughout the week. And this is also where I put any thoughts about things I need to do that I've recorded on notepad paper or note cards. And I'll talk more about capturing your thoughts in detail during next week's episode. Um, I do want to say one thing about this basket, um, weekly planning container system, whatever you want to call it. Um, You know, I say that I collect all of these things during the week. That means when the mail comes in, I immediately go through it recycle or shred what I don't need, and then put the rest in my basket. The same with emails. If I come across an email that um, has things that I need to do, then um, I'll print that out and I'll stick it in my basket. Um, You know, if I get a magazine or a catalog and I hadn't had time to read it yet, it goes in the basket. So, really is a great place to get items off your countertops in your kitchen or wherever you may end up with paper piles and you get all of that in one place and then you go through it one time at the end of the week Um, but part of the key to that is going ahead and getting rid of what you can before it makes it in the basket sometimes I'll put things in there that I'm just not sure about if I want to do or if I need to do and that's fine but I get so much junk mail that it would just not be worth my time to just throw it in there and deal with it later. I like to deal with it right away. And also, I just like opening my mail every day because you never know um, if something got delayed in the mail and you really needed to respond to it within the next day or two before you do your weekly review, then you need to take care of it. But if you just put all that unopened mail in your box and waited for the weekend, then you may miss an important deadline. So I do like to process um, my mail as soon as possible so that I know I'm taking care of everything. So I collect all of these items I just mentioned throughout the week, and then when it's time to actually do the weekly review, I also check the places I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, such as emails, voicemail, social media, and text messages. I'll share in the third installment of this series about how you can simplify where you get your information from, because if you can't control the flow of information into your life, you will always feel like you're drowning and will be in a constant state of overwhelm. So once I feel like I have all the information I need, I begin to process um all of that information and I begin to decide what needs to be done for the week ahead and what can wait until another week. The way I go about this is first to sort through all of the papers in my basket. I group them by type. So um, I think I mentioned a minute ago that I get magazines and catalogs sometimes so I'll put them in a pile. Then I'll put all the papers dealing with things I need to put on my calendar in one pile and the things that I either need to look up on the computer or, or order online, they can go in another pile. 
and the papers that have information I need for projects I'm working on go in yet another pile. You get the idea. You just sort through and put things in like piles. Then I look through each pile to see what needs to be done that week. I have a folder labeled to do this week that I put all of the must do's for the week in. Everything else that's left that can wait until the next week or beyond, I put in folders by the category types I mentioned earlier. I have folders for computer work, current projects, my calendar, and I even have one for papers that remind me that I'm waiting for more information. And again, this is getting into a lot of detail. The main thing you need to take away from here is to be able to sort through your papers and figure out what needs to be done in the week ahead. At, um, in another episode down the road, I'll share more about how this weekly review basket is set up for me and go into a little more detail. But again, I think the main point is just to make sure you are finding the things that need to be done and getting them out and ready to go for the next week. So the items that I've determined that need to get done in the week ahead make up my to-do list for the next week. Now, sometimes I have to reassess when I get my pile of to-dos in front of me. I may realize that I've picked out too many things to do. And this happens when there are not very many things that have to be done that week. And I try to fill in my to-do list with things I want to do. So sometimes I do have to scale back on what I want to do and save some of the task for another week. I can get overly ambitious sometimes. And knowing my energy levels and motivation, I know that less is better. Um, you don't want to put things off forever, but you also need to take into account how you work, how you get everything done, and also leave some room for fun and for buffer on the occasion that you get interrupted in things and or an emergency comes up. You don't want to have your schedule so packed that if a crisis occurs, you can't get you know, it's so chaotic because you have so much to do and you've got to reschedule or put to the side or something. Um, anyway, you don't want to have an overloaded schedule of to-dos. So once I have um, my to-dos decided, like I've called them down to an appropriate amount for the week, I'll put them in my planner and I'll try to assign a time to get them done because I have been known in the past, as I've said, to make these great to-do lists. And they are usually um, filled with things I could get done during that week. Um, I probably have a moderate amount of set appointments or commitments. And so I could probably get all of these things done. But I, if I don't um, specifically block out the time that I want to get them done, then often they don't get done. It's just how it is. I see all this blank time on my calendar. And even though I see my to-do list, I'm like, oh, I could go read a book or maybe I can catch up on Facebook or watch that YouTube video or catch up on my Netflix shows, whatever. And so if I can just schedule in the time to get these to-do list done, um, then I'm more apt to get them done. And that is a concept called time blocking, which again, I will address in a future episode. This one episode has just brought out so many different things that I could talk about related to time management, which is exciting to me because I want to be able to talk more about that with you. I've got some great ideas for other resources for you for time management and this is just the beginning. So let's get back to the weekly review. So after I've um, assigned a time to get the to-dos done, sometimes I'll, if I have the extra time during my weekly review, I'll try to take care of some of the tasks right then. For instance, if I need to add something to my calendar or respond to an event or even need to order something online, I often will go ahead and do those things during my weekly review unless I'm just running short on time. It just depends. But if I get to do that, it gives me a leg up for the week ahead and sometimes allows me to pick out other tasks to add to my to-do list for that week. 
Now, obviously, there is more detail I could go into regarding wiggly planning, but I think I've given you enough information so that you can get started doing your own weekly review. So let's recap. First, you need to find a box, a basket, a letter tray, or some other container to hold all of the papers and thoughts that come in during the week. Second, fill out your calendar with appointments and commitments that you have already set. Third, go through your weekly review container and sort your papers. Fourth, make sure you check all of your information sources. Like I said, your mail, your email, um, text messages, social media messages, whatever, so you don't miss anything. Fifth, decide which papers represent tasks that need to be done that week. And sixth, make out your to-do list. The key to success with the weekly review and to make sure you don't miss anything is to commit to doing it every week. On occasion, you may have to miss it because life happens. However, it should be your regular practice to do a review every week. I hope you picked up some ideas about how to do a weekly review. Most importantly, though, I hope you'll find some way to collect and corral all of your papers and thoughts for the week. This is just the first step in conquering the chaos in your mind. Next week, we'll talk about how to get things off your mind. If you have any questions about the weekly review or just the whole concept of mind organization, or you want to share how you keep up with papers and to-do items, send me an email at theplanningwoman at gmail.com. I'd love to hear your thoughts and try to answer your questions. Also, you can connect with me on social media, on Facebook at facebook.com slash theplanningwoman, and Instagram at instagram.com slash theplanningwoman. Thanks so much for stopping by today. Until next time, I hope you have a great week.